Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. If you've been following this channel for any length of time, Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG for short, need no introduction. A Mexican drug cartel formed in 2009 in the state of Jalisco. Ever since then, they have risen to the top of the criminal underworld, becoming one of the largest and most influential cartels in Mexico and beyond. Led by Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, known as El Mencho, CJNG have taken large amounts of territory throughout Mexico with the use of extreme violence, narco-terrorism and corruption. Much like the Zetas before them, CJNG's paramilitary tactics have been crucial in them securing key drug routes throughout Mexico which lead to the other side of the border. As of right now, CJNG find themselves in battles with various cartels such as Carteles Unidos, La Familia Michoacana and Los Viagras in Michoacan and most notably the Sinaloa Cartel in the battleground of Zacatecas. In fact, Cartel de Sinaloa created an armed wing known as Operation MZ to battle for CJNG hit squads in the area. Not only are CJNG engaged in violent skirmishes with other criminal organisations, but over the last couple of years, as CJNG has grown, they've had to deal with infighting and defectors such as Carlos Enrique Sanchez, aka El Cholo, and Eric Valencia Salazar, aka L85, who left CJNG to create the Nueva Plaza Cartel in Guadalajara, El Cholo would later be brutally murdered. More recently, a group by the name of Pajaro Sierra left CJNG and have been attempting to go it alone, much to the annoyance of El Mencho. Ernesto Mascuro, aka El Chaparro, is alleged to be the leader of the Pajaro Sierra group and is a marked man. El Mencho wants him dead, but as of right now, Pajaro Sierra continued to fight CJNG on the border of Jalisco and Michoacan. The most notable example of such violence occurred on the 27th of February 2022 in the town of San Jose de Grazia, where 17 people were gunned down at a CJNG wake. The attack was blamed on the Pajaro Sierra group. On the 6th of May 2022, a narco banner was found in the town of Mazamitla in Jalisco. The message was significant as it was signed by Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho himself, which was his first public communication since the widespread rumours of his possible death in early 2022. The banner read the following, To all the general population of Mazamitla and its surroundings, we are Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion. Through this means, we are acknowledging that we are here and that our fight is not against the innocent civilians and the government. We are looking for Ernesto Mascaro, El Chaparro, and all of his sons of bitches that are called Pajaro Sierra, a bunch of lowlifes, and we will not permit rats and vulgars. One by one, they will fall, sons of bitches and traitors. And also, to any law enforcement authorities that support them, you better get out of the way. If not, we will fuck you up. For a Mazamitla, free of rats. Sincerely, Mencho. As well as narco banners, a CJNG subgroup by the name of Fuezas Especiales Mencho, aka Mencho Special Forces, released a video in March of 2022 in which they tell the civilians of Mazamitla that they are not there to hurt them and that they are only in town to go after the traitor El Chaparro because of his shooting at the wake in San Jose de Grazia, in which they say he ordered. As many are aware, CJNG have multiple armed wings within their organisation, such as Mencho Special Forces, Grupo Elite, Pantera, Delta, Guerreros and Sierra, with many speculating that the Pajara Sierra group originated from Grupo Sierra, though this has not been confirmed. 
Many with their ear close to the ground in the narco world are speculating that CJNG are at a pivotal point in their history, with internal conflicts and defectors occurring more regularly, as well as the Nueva Plaza Cartel and Pajara Sierra being formed by former CJNG members, the independent Kalima Cartel is another example of this, which has sparked an increase in violence in the small state of Kalima. The pertinent question is, will CJNG go the way of the Zetas and eventually break down into multiple cartels, or can El Mencho retain his power? Time will tell, but either way, the consequences will be brutal. But nevertheless, on the 27th of May 2022, three videos were uploaded to a well-known narco site. One of the videos being an interrogation, and the remaining two being grisly executions. In regards to the interrogation video, it's just under three minutes long, and it depicts a visibly distressed middle-aged man wearing no shirt, answering questions from his CJNG interrogators. It's confirmed that the victim in the video works for Bahara Sierra. I will provide a copy of the transcript for the interrogation in the pinned comment, but essentially, the victim in the video gives away the location of a couple of his colleagues. Now, the second video depicts the execution of an alleged Pahara Sierra member, and it is the most gruesome of the two execution videos. When it comes to the vast majority of cartel videos that I've seen, primarily, they are usually filmed in very poor quality. However, that isn't the case with this video. Allegedly, the victim in the video goes by the alias of El Bebe, and he is a Halcon for Pajaro Sierra. A Halcon essentially being a lookout and the lowest rank of a cartel organisation. They are basically the eyes and ears, and they will report back to their superiors with information on rival cartels, law enforcement, etc. The video opens up. It's shot during the middle of the day in a desert area. The victim is laying on the ground on his stomach, with his hands tied behind his back. He is surrounded by about five CJNG members, one of which can be seen kneeling on his back and pulling his hair so his head is raised. The victim appears to be in his late teens to early twenties. Now, this is where the video gets bad. A CJNG member walks into shot, and he's carrying a pair of pliers and a knife. He kneels down next to the victim as his hair is being pulled and his head is being raised. He inserts the pliers into the victim's mouth, attempting to grab his tongue, which he eventually does. He then takes the knife and starts slicing the victim's tongue. As this is happening, the victim lets out a muffled scream. In order to stop the screams, the cartel member restraining him slaps him in the face several times. A piece of his tongue is sliced off as blood starts to collect on the ground. Once his tongue has been cut out, the cartel member who is pulling his hair takes his knife and it looks like he's going to behead him. However, he is stopped by his cartel colleagues. The cartel member who cut the victim's tongue out then comes back into frame. He grabs the victim's right ear and cuts a part of it off with his knife. He repeats the same process with the left ear. I'm presuming that this form of torture is meant to signify what his position was in the Pahara Sierra organization. Ears as in listening and tongue as in talking too much. After the ears have been cut off, the cartel member pulling the victim's hair takes his combat knife and starts slashing the victim's throat. After a couple of seconds, the victim is almost completely decapitated. Blood soaks the desert ground as the knife-wielding maniac tries to sever the spine, which he eventually does. A woman can be heard laughing in the background. That is where the second video ends. 
The video is especially brutal, and it's made worse due to the good camera quality. In all honesty, this actually looks more like an ISIS video, more so than a cartel video, not only due to the camera quality, but also in regards to how sharp the blades were and how quickly this transpired. The whole video is just over one and a half minutes long. The third video is just under three minutes long, and although not as brutal, it is still very disturbing. The video begins with a man being dragged by CJNG Sicarios towards the edge of a freshly dug grave. The man has no shirt, he is blindfolded, and his hands are tied behind his back. He is briefly interrogated by Sicarios as a female Sicario is pointing a gun at his head. She pistol whips him, and then proceeds to shoot him in the head. However, despite being shot in the head, he is somehow still alive. You can hear him groan as he lays on the floor. His body is pushed into the grave, and the female Sicario then proceeds to shoot a couple of times into the grave, finally killing him. The final 30 seconds or so of a video shows another execution of another man in the exact same fashion. A brief interrogation, followed by the female Sicario shooting him in the head, and then his body being pushed into the grave. And that is where the third video ends. As mentioned, these videos are very recent, and they serve us as a reminder to the ongoing violence in Mexico surrounding drug cartels. And as of right now, that violence has no end in sight. 51 years ago, then US President Richard Nixon declared that drug abuse was public enemy number one, and he launched the War on Drugs, a war that's been an objective failure, albeit very profitable for the prison industrial complex when it comes to locking up low-level drug users. The sad fact is that it seems we're further away from a solution than we've ever been. The blood continues to pour, on both sides of the border and beyond, communities ravaged and ruined by drugs. The situation seems hopeless. All one can do is wish that we find a solution sooner rather than later. But anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. And I apologize for the diatribe at the end, but the longer I've covered this content, the more invested I've become. It would be amazing if our community could somehow make a difference, but I'm not sure how to go about that, and that's been playing on my mind a lot recently. It'd be amazing to somehow make a difference or open more people's eyes up to what is going on. I would love to go to Mexico to cover this firsthand, but that is something that I couldn't do alone. I believe I would need some sort of big news outlet to work with me to be able to achieve that. But yeah, that sort of thing plays on my mind a lot. It really does. But yeah, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you guys for all of the support that you have shown me. It's much appreciated. Thank you to the channel members, by the way. You really help keep this channel going. And also, thank you to the Patreons. I know I've not pushed Patreon that much, and for my existing Patreons, I apologise for the lack of content in the last few days. I'll try and get something up in the next couple of days. But, um, yeah, thank you guys for all of the support. It's much appreciated. You guys are amazing. But, as always, stay safe. And I'll catch you on the next one.